How many people are glad you came to church? When I'm doing this, I feel like I was doing what I was born to do. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like I'm doing what I was born to do. I, I want to make sure that a foundation, a solid biblical foundation exists in the church from generation to generation. I am tired of these junk food babies starting churches off of potato chips. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. And drawing more people than you can feed. That's why you're being peeled off to all these other religions. Because you don't know who you are. That's why people come in and tell you Christianity is the white man's religion. Because you don't know who you are. If you knew who you were, they couldn't pass that off on you. Stand up, Dr. Harrison. He's just as much Gentile as I am. By the flesh, neither one of us are the seed of Abraham. He's just a different flavor of the same mess. Christianity is not rooted in white men. Christianity is rooted in Judaism, and Judaism is rooted in Abraham, and Abraham was rooted in God. This is not about colors. This is not about colors this is about covenant it is about covenant it is not about colors do not allow the pain of your past to pervert your theology If you got a contract with Mutual of Omaha and I got a contract with Mutual of Omaha, they don't care whether you're white and I'm black. It's do you have a contract? God is a God of covenant. Covenant is a contract. If you have a contract, it ain't a white contract. It ain't a black contract. It ain't a Latino contract. It's a contract. Go away with that stupid stuff. It's a contract. Isaiah 59 verse 20 And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob saith the Lord As for me this is my covenant with them saith the Lord My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. All praise to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. <clears throat> Enough respect to the brothers teaching the truth all over the earth. And uh, Shalom to the hopefully elect. This lesson is going to be entitled Hebrew Israelites with a subtitle of Esau, T.D. Jakes, The Covenants, and the Olive Trees. And Coming from that clip, the opening clip you just saw, these 501c3 pastors, the mega church ones now, are ready to step up <clears throat> and they're ready to try to go against the Israelites, okay? Now, we know through the Spirit that when T.D. Jake started saying all that stuff about, you know, uh, junk food babies, he was talking about the Hebrew Israelites, the young, the young brothers, right? He's throwing shots at the Israelites and he's trying to save these devils, man. It's always the same thing. He, he's in an attempt to make the Bible a universal book, all right, everybody coming together, you know, using that Christianity doctrine, that, that every, God loves everybody doctrine, and he wants to blur the lines, showing, you know, try to prove to you that everybody can be saved, that so-called white man's not Esau. Really, the bottom line is this truth is, is getting a lot of, you know, hey, it's making waves in the earth, as the Most High said it would. This is an end time, a great end time sign, showing you that this truth that we're teaching, we're not doing it in vain. The Most High is bringing to pass what he said he was going to do. The house of Israel is waking up. And, and the bottom line is Esau is afraid. And now he's got to send forth his mega church pastors, right? And most of them, as I said, and many brothers have stated, that the people that he's going to send are Israelites. Why? Because the so-called white man is Esau. And even though a lot of Israelites and a lot of so-called blacks and people teach that Esau is not the white man, nobody trusts this devil. 
so therefore when you see that white face the earth is already um distrustful of so-called white people because they're a bunch of uh, criminals and devils man you know the edomites been talking about so you got to send israelites to convince israelites that you know of anything you want to teach now this is not new we just got on uh, this guy geno jennings he came forward trying to do that exact same thing okay the exact same thing and i did a video three weeks ago geno jennings the white man is esau what did geno jennings do he got a bunch of white people in his church he called them forth and he said these hebrew israelites called these people edomites and then he went on on a tirade the same as td jakes did now jakes tried to go a little more in depth so what we're going to do we got the first um clip of td jakes now we're going to go into the scriptures a little bit and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to play you with two more clips of td jakes and then we're going to also attack what he stated and we're going to break it down the right way okay now this first thing he was talking about the con the contract it's a covenant it's not a black contract it's not a white contract it's a covenant right he said if you got a contract with mutual of omaha and i got a contract with them they ain't worried about whether i'm black or white well we don't teach uh salvation according to color we teach it according to the seed okay as it says here in the scriptures again isaiah 59 verse 20 and the redeemer shall come to zion the redeemer to redeem means to save or buy back right and he says the redeemer shall come to zion we know that the savior died on the cross to to do what to redeem israel the israelites to the most high and we're gonna prove that all right and the redeemer shall come to zion zion is another name for israelites or for israel because in the hebrew to zion means what a monument or to remember and unto them so you got to read with understanding the redeemer shall come to zion and unto them that turn from transgression in jacob so the redeemer came to do what and what is transgression that's sin he came to to uh unto them that turn from transgression in jacob said the lord these are the only people if you just read that that you can close the book but it goes for uh further as for me this is my covenant they got a contract if they got a contract mutual omaha no 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 as for me this is my covenant with them who is the them you heard it here zion and, for, and jacob that's the only them that is dealing with and you're gonna say, oh, that was the old covenant. That was the old covenant. The new covenant includes everyone. Well, we're gonna see. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth. So wait a minute. The spirit, the Holy Spirit, because that's the spirit the Most High put on His men, right? On His people. My spirit that is upon me, and my words which I have put in thy mouth. The Bible, the words coming out of the book shall not depart out of thy mouth jacob and zion nor out of the mouth of thy seed the children of israel nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed the children's children of israel saith the lord from henceforth and forever you see it's obvious and plain we don't got to spend a lot of time on let's read luke 168 from the new testament for all of the christians luke 1 verse 68 pertaining to the savior himself blessed be the lord god of israel for he hath visited and redeemed, saved his people. Well, we're all people of God. Aren't we, brother? We're all people of God. Well, let's see who his people are. Joel 3, verse 16. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. There's that word again. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. And the strength of the children of Israel. See, those are the Lord's people. And that's it. Now let's go back to Luke 168. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us. Who's the us? Who's the us? His people, Israel. And has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from uh, and from the hand of all that hate us who is it that hates us the nations hate us you read psalms 83 it goes into the confederacy of the nations that all that hate us you see all the nations hate israel you read first maccabees 5 and 1 it says when the uh, when the nations saw the altar of the most house being built as before it displeased them very much the nations are your enemies israelites okay and this conspiracy that Esau sets forth from his 501c3 pastors, they're trying to take away 
your inheritance trying to take away and make themselves a part of the covenant but it, it goes on that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to do what to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath which he swore to our father abraham what did he say you know go back and find that out because he he made a covenant with abraham that thou he would never forsake his seed right not seeds as of many but seeds let's go to romans 9 romans 9 and verse 6 uh and i just read briefly here not as though the word of god had taken none effect for they are not all israel which are of israel you got the israel of the most high which is the elect and then you got the wicked israelites right the only ones the most high dealing with is the elect neither because they are the seed of abraham are they all children but in isaac isaac singular shall thy seed be called and it went on to compare isaac and ishmael and it broke it down then it goes further to going into jacob and esau i mean uh yeah jacob and esau so that he's the God of Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob. Matter of fact, let me go real quick. I got to go here. And Salaki, bear with me one second here. <clears throat> this is going to be second Esdras. And this is going to make it more plain. Second Edges chapter 3. And verse 16. Um, I'm going to start at verse 13. Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. And him thou lovest, and to him only thou showest thy will. And madest an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. Singular. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. When you get put by, you get put aside. He rejected Esau, and he loved Jacob. Romans 9, uh, verse 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed, the same seed that covenant was promised to, right? And that's who it's talking about. You see? Now we're going to be using Romans 9 a lot. So we're going to go back to that. Now let's go back to um, Luke 172 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to, the, to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Who's it talking about? In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. What's he gonna be, what are you going to do when you go before the Lord to prepare his ways? To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Who's it talking about? Is it talking about everybody? You're not reading in context, brother. No, you're not reading in context because you go into scriptures and you try to apply to everyone when it's obvious who it's pertaining to. If we went up back up again, it started talking about those of the house of David, the, of the servant David, those that are over the redeemed. We went go back to Isaiah 59, what we just read. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the desert till the days of his showing unto Israel. Zion, you see. So when he goes on and on talking about a contract and this and that, he, hey, T.D. Jakes was sent to deceive. And we got another video showing and revealing to you that T.D. Jakes knows he's an Israelite. Okay, he knows. And he's been hipped up to the game. Now, these 501c3 pastors, they're going to continue to do this. These mega church pastors, now the truth is ready to take center stage. And this is pretty much Esau's last, uh, his, his last uh, front that he can, he can go, you know. The last place he can go to, he got to go to his powerful mega church preachers with all the, the pool and the money and all the members, right? To try to put the brakes on the truth. But what's wind up happening is. Every time one of these people come up against us. You know. 
this truth is going to plunder his church and all of Christianity and the elect is going to come out from among them and the rest of you going to get destroyed. Thus said the Lord. So, hey, brothers, get ready. You know, get ready to get the lessons done. We're going in on all these uh, 501c3 pastors and all these things that were made, uh, that have been kept secret from the foundation of the earth. They're going to start being broken down, which we already been breaking them down, but these people are going to start to see. All right. So let's deal with the covenant now. Because we dealt with uh, the old covenant. Let's deal with the new covenant. Who's the new covenant for? Because T.D. Jake said if he had a contract and then a white man had a contract or however he said it. Right. But the contract was only for the house of Israel. The old one and the new one is for the same people. Let's prove it. Jeremiah 31 verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The house of Israel, the ten tribes, the house of Judah or the southern tribe or the southern kingdom. The house of Israel is the northern kingdom, right? And he went on further to say, if I'm not mistaken, either in this clip or the next one, he said, the most high ain't, you know, it ain't got to do with a Latino. He put that in there, you know? T.D. Jakes is a false prophet, okay? And and all these guys, Creflo Dollar probably going to have his say-so, different ones he's going to use, you know? Because what? They all on the so-called white man Esau's payroll, and they can't refuse. They're going to have to, at some point, address the Hebrew Israelites. Now, T.D. Jakes chose not to name us, you know, but we know who he's talking about through the spirit. Okay. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, not that first covenant. In the day which, that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be to and will be their God. and They shall be my people. Didn't mention nobody else. It mentioned Israel only. And they who's the they Israel shall teach no more. Every man, his neighbor and every man, his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them. Who's the them Israel? Right? That's the new covenant. Who is for? For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. See that? For thus said the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divide the sea when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then if those ordinances depart, the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So the Most High is making it plain. He always going to love the Israelites. Those are the only people. He didn't cast them away. Right? And you even got people that said, and some of the so-called Christian ministers and pastors have said, there's no more nations. Which they was going off. Okay? Which that proved it to you right there. Let's get the precept in the New Testament. That was the Old Testament. You know, the New Testament talks about the Jesus' blood bringing back all nations. Nope, 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 nope. Hebrews 8, verse 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them... He said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Said the same thing as Jeremiah 31, the 31st chapter is talking about. New covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, right? Which, which is not fully enacted yet. Because what did it say? We're going to go on and read it. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Right? And the kingdom is when it's going to fully come into, into place and we can prove that. And he also, T.D. Jakes, also went on to say none of us have Jewish or what he said ancestry, uh, Israeli ancestry in us, which is a damn lie. Okay? Which we, he's probably, he's going to say that in the next clip, okay? But I, I got a little ahead of myself. But in the next part of the clip, you're going to see. And then maybe we'll, we'll deal with that then. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. 
and write them in their hearts and i will be to them a god and they shall be to me a people and what's that going to enable them to do and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the lord for all all who the people under the covenant the house of israel and the house of judah the house of israel and the house of judah right here And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins, and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith, A new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. When did he mention the other nations? When did he mention it's not about this covenant? You know, it's not about this colors because we never said it was about color you saying that when we say so-called white so-called black it's just so you understand who we're talking about it's about the seed of the house of israel as we read in the opening scripture isaiah 59 and verses what uh 20 through 21 or you can say from 18 on down you see td jakes is a false prophet they're trying to make it seem as though we're saying something this is where the false prophet israelite groups come into play that's why you got a lot of niggas now saying oh all the 12 tribes are black people. They got to put that label black, 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 black. So therefore, when they come back, they can say, oh, you just talking about skin color. We never said that. You see, the real truth of the Holy Bible is that the, 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 uh, this truth is for the house of Israel. No matter how you look on the outside, but it's for the seed of the house of Israel and not for the whole world. Stay tuned for these clips. You're going to see more debauchery, more lies from the false prophet known as T.D. Jakes. Watch close. And we'll come back with more scriptures. Stay tuned. It's rigged. My, let me tell you, this chair is about to break. <laughs> my father's sitting here and my mother is sitting here and they're wow. fighting for the mic from moment to moment. My grandmother talks to you every now and then. All of my ancestors are sitting on this table all the way back to Nigeria. <laughs> all of them. My, my ancestors were Igbos mm -hmm. from Nigeria, and Igbos are called black Jews, that they're industrious, that they go after things, that they're hard-working people. My, my ancestors were Igbos mm -hmm. from Nigeria, and Igbos are called black Jews. Now, sit down, I'm gonna show you something real fast. I'm gonna get out of here. Woo! Woo. I, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. If the church is the branch, how did we become so? Glad you asked. In Romans 11, 17 through 25, I'm almost there. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree. Let me catch them up to what's going on. Paul is writing to the Romans and he's trying to make them understand that God has not forgotten his people being the Jews that he has not forever cast them away he's trying to make them understand Romans Romans European Romans Rome is a part of Europe he's trying to make them understand that they were wild olive trees Get this. You need this. You need to understand this. They were wild olive trees. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, come on. Were grafted in among them. You were grafted in among them. And with them partakest of the root. And with them partakest of the root. That's and back to my lamp again. Of the root and the fatness of the olive tree you, you're crafty are you following me are you following what i'm saying this is a graph this is a graph glory to god i'm feeling happy give me that next verse boast not against the branches boast not against the branches but if thou boast if thou boast thou bearest not the root bear, thou bearest not the root but the root 
thee. But the root bear thee. If you bring it, if you think that God casting away, let me break this down because I want to be sure you get it. I want you to see that when Jesus came unto his own, his own, his own, and his own received him not, their rejection of him left an opening. And you who were dead, me and you, in the trespasses of our sins, have he quickened together with Christ by grace ye are grafted. Come on, come on church with me. So, what, what is a graft? A graft is somebody, somebody uh, gets, gets burned in a fire and, the, and they take skin from one place and they graft it into another. A graft would be a kidney transplant. My kidneys go out, they take your kidneys and they put them in and there's a grafting in. When Christ died on the cross, God was grafting us in so that those of us who did not have a covenant now have a covenant through and by the blood of Jesus. Every graft requires some antibiotics. Through Christ Jesus, we are sanctified into the place that we now stand. Are you with me? Give me some more. Give me some more. I'm almost finished. That thou wilt say then the uh, branches were broken off the branches that, were broken off that I might be grafted in that I might be that I that I that I might be grafted in the, the he, thou will say he said this is how I want you to see your relationship since neither you nor I have Israeli ancestry okay so put my text back up here that, so this is what we're going to say, me and you, Doc, this is what we're going to say. The branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Come on. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Uh-huh. And thou standest by faith. Uh-huh. Be not high-minded, but fear. <laughs> See, do, do, are you getting this? See, you were grafted in by faith. Don't get high-minded. Because if he cut them off for unbelief. Am I helping anybody? Okay. Give me some more. For if God spared not the natural branches, uh -huh. take heed lest he also spare not thee. If God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. You're privileged in the place. You're connected by covenant. Do you not know I have a contract with God? That's why they call it the New Testament. A testament is a contract. I got a will right now. I got a will. I got a will. And then when they read it, I'm going to read it. It's going to say last will and testament. It ain't a maybe. It ain't a if you feel like it. I got a will because I'm going to be boss when I'm dead. You get what I say you got. It's mine. I give it to who I want to give it to. Uh, Jesus brought us a new testament. The testament is not enforced until a testator dies. When he died, the new testament came into effect. And we who were far off were drawn nigh through the blood of Jesus Christ that we might be grafted in. By grace are ye saved. Don't get high-minded though. Don't get high-minded. Now, when Christ says, ye are the branches, he said, I'm going to give you, amen. I'm going to give you a hookup. <laughs> hook up is something you wasn't even supposed to get. I'm going to hook you up. Jesus came to hook us up. He is the shaft that hooked us up. <laughs> Alright, so we're back. Now, those of you that saw those clips, which everybody saw that, okay? If you're watching this video, you saw the clips. That was absolutely astounding. The level of wickedness that these pastors have. But you see that he knows 
about the truth. He knows he's an Israelite. He knows about the Ebos, and the Ebo is another word for Hebrew. He knows the truth. Now he started out in the first clip saying none of us, and he pointed to the white dude and he said, well, he's just as much Gentile as I am. It's important to note that when you look at the term Gentile, there's two Gentiles. There's everybody that's not Israelites, right? And then you also have the Israelites that was cast off into captivity, the scattered, you know, the scattered Israelites, the diaspora, if you will, because pursuant to the curses, Israel was scattered to all nations of the earth and then they became Gentiles because why? They lost their heritage, you know, and it's well proven. And these devils know what we teach and so does T.D. Jakes. Now, in doing that, he said, what? None of us have Israeli ancestry. But when you analyze the scriptures closely, you know that the people that in Israel call themselves Israelis because the scriptures never mention Israelis. It mentioned the Jews, Judah, Levi, and Benjamin, and then it mentioned or the southern kingdom of Judah. Then it mentioned the ten tribes or the northern kingdom, which makes up the house of Israel, Judah and Israel together, right? Which make up the twelve tribes of Israel also. You know, he loves to try to make a differentiation with just the, Jew, the Jews and then the Gentiles being everybody else. Well, Israel is 12 tribes of people. You never mentioned the 12 tribes. And in the beginning, he said, what? They can pass that off on you because you don't know who you are. That's why I put in the caption, well, who are they? He never told you who you were. He didn't say who you were because they leave that open. But let's prove real quick the people in Israel now are not Jews. And in fact, they're not Israelites. Ezekiel 36 and 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy... Have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which is the Greek where you say Edom, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. So the people that took the Lord's land and divided it and parted it and said they were Israelites are in fact Edomites. And they admit such things in the uh, Jewish encyclopedia for number one. Right. Also, it's known in history because who was ruling during the time of the Savior? was uh, King Herod. He was an Edomite. It's well-known fact. I just did a lesson on it recently. So have many brothers been going into that because the Spirit been on us to bring out the fact that the Romans were in fact Edomites. And then later on you had what? That's the devil, Hyrcanus, if that's, his, if that's how you say his name, John Hyrcanus was also an Edomite, right? They were from the, the line of the Idumians and then they so-called um, converted to Judaism which Judaism which T.D. Jake said Judaism is rooted in Abraham. And that's a lie. Judaism is a, is a created religion. Also of the Israeli state and those Edomites, right? And here's something further. In 1948, the land of Israel was made what? The state of Israel came into being. And who helped them do it? America and, um, and Great Britain. You see? So the state of Israel is not in the scripture. So when T.D. Jake says all of this, you know, He's in error, which he he really ain't in error. He knows this because they're his they're his bosses. I mean, and you saw that that jerk, uh, what was his name, Eddie Long, before he passed away, he had these these uh, so called white men lift him up in a chair and put a crown on him and give him a scepter and wrap him up in what was perceived as to be the Torah. You see, it's all great deception. And also, let me let me also mention before we go forward into the scriptures that T D Jakes, you know, to get you under the the illusion. You know, to mess with your minds, he making you feel as though you're the Gentiles. You have no Israelite heritage, right? And that you were grafted in to make you go for it. But in fact, that's lies because you are the children of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the confusion of faith Israelites that may not look like black people or, or, or Mexicans or whatever. You know, you won't look like the standard Israelite. You are, in fact, Israelites. If you go back to the seed of the house of Israel. And this thing gets understated because of why so many false Israelite groups, so many lies. You know, so much uh, sensationalism that they tell. Now, you so-called Christians, you so-called mainly you uh, Edomites, you white people, you have a saying, reading in context. When you go to the book of Romans and he starts talking about being grafted in in the olive trees, you jump into Romans 11 and you never deal with Romans 1. Who was the, was the uh, whole chapter of Romans even written to? Let's find out. This is Romans 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of and he says Jesus Christ, which he didn't say that, okay? The name is Yahweh Shai, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of the Most High, which he had promised of four by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Yahweh Shai, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. You see, according to the flesh, 
So he was in fact the Israelite, right? From the tribe of Judah. Now when you jump down, who is this whole book of Romans written to? In verse, we'll start at six. Among whom are ye also called, also the called of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, to all that be in Rome, not all the Romans, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from our uh, the Most High, our Father, and the Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Now, T.D. Jake said what? They were Rome, Romans. Rome is a part of Europe. See, he was just deceiving you. Because Rome may be, yes, yeah, part, of, part of Europe, but the letter of Romans wasn't written to the Romans. The book of Romans wasn't written to the Romans that crucified the Lord. It was written to the Israelites that were dwelling in Rome. Here's the proof. To all that be in Rome, beloved of the Most High, called to be saints. Who are the saints? Psalms 148, verse 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the heaven and earth. He also exalted the horn of his people. We didn't already read who the Lord's people was. We read that in Joel 3.16. The hope of his people. The praise of all his saints. Even of the children of Israel. A people. Because a, a lot of people like to say. See it says here. Even the children of Israel. The saints are not. Well it's only talking about one people. A people. Near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. And so you don't get stupid. Let's get another scripture. Psalm 149 and 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And his praise to the congregation of saints. Now it tells in, in Revelation. No man can learn that song. Except the hundred and forty and four thousand. So this new song. Is unequivocal. That it's talking about the Israelites. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Not the king of the world. Their king. And, and world meaning uh, that particular group. Because he is going to be the king of the whole earth. Of course. And the universe. Let them. Who? Israel. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the trembling heart. Why? For the Lord take a pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory let them who the saints who are the saints israel let them sing aloud upon their beds let the high praises of the most high be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand and what are they going to do with it showing you that this is clear distinction that is two separate lots as it tells you in the book of uh esther the additions to the book of esther in the apocrypha it says the most High have one lot for the children of israel and another lot for the heathens let the high praises of God be in their mouth. In whose mouth? The saints, Israel. And a two-edged sword in their hand. What are they going to do with it? To execute vengeance upon the heathen. Now the heathen are mentioned. The other nations. And punishments upon the people. What are they going to do then? To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them. Who's the them here? The heathen. The other nations. Gentiles. To ex execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. So you mean to tell me the saints of the other nations that are called to be saints, they are invited in, and they're going to also take the heathen nations as slaves? But I thought they was heathens. See, so it's talking about the Israelites only. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. So the saints are the children of Israel. So when you read Romans, right? The book of Romans, it's not written to Europeans, bro, which, which really, that's just a label. There's no people known as Europeans in the Bible. You're talking about the Edomites, Esau. To all that be in Rome, beloved of the Most High, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from the Most High, our Father and the Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. The whole book of Romans is written to the Israelites. Let's prove further. Romans 9 verse 1, I say the truth and the anointed I lie not. My conscience also bear me, in, bear me witness in the Holy Spirit. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish that myself were a curse from the anointed for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. It could be a spiritual Israelite. Not, not according to this. Not according to Isaiah 59 and verse, what, 20 through 21. It's about the flesh. And then you can be a spiritual Israelite. If you're an Israelite according to the flesh. Right? My kinsmen according to the flesh who are Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption? You can't be adopted if you're not an Israelite. And the glory, you can't get the glory if you're not an Israelite. And the covenants. Oh, T.D. Jakes. 
You can't be under either one of the covenants, any of the covenants, unless you are Israelite. And the giving of the law, who was the law given to? The Israelites and the service of the Most High. You can't even serve the Most High if you're not an Israelite, which we know that Job could no way have been an Edomite because he was serving the Most High. He was a Most High servant. Hast thou not considered my servant Job? Plain, man. And the service of the Most High and the promises, the kingdom of heaven and all the promises written in this book, you cannot have partakers, be partakers of that if you're not an Israelite. Whose are the fathers? And of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came The anointed The savior Who is overall The most high blessed forever Our man So wait a minute So that, that told you right there The savior came according to the Came in the flesh You know Who was the people he came for in the flesh It said And of whom as concerning the flesh The anointed came So he didn't even die For all the world He only died for the world of Israel Which we tell you time and again now let's deal with Romans We'll start at verse 1 We're going to deal with Romans 11 a little bit Let's look at it Romans 11 which T.D. Jakes was badly going off And he teaches scriptures the way that all these so called Christians teach it As if it's applying to everybody in the whole world If you read a letter that's addressed to me And you put yourself in it you could easily, If my wife wrote me a letter And said all kind of dirty things in it or, or lovable things in it And you were somebody that she ain't married to You can't pick up the letter and say oh she talking dirty to me because it wasn't addressed to you. Now we know who this letter is addressed to. The whole book of Romans is addressed to who? The Israelites dwelling among the Romans, calling themselves Romans because what? Paul was a Roman citizen. You know, look it up. Paul was a Roman. But what was his lineage? Israel, as he says here. Oh, I'm sorry, but the Most High is going to make it clear that he didn't cast away his people. And you know what Paul did say it? He says here he's an Israelite. But first... uh. Yeah, let's just read it. Romans 11 and 1. I say then, hath the Most High cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin, which is from the house of Israel. The Most High hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to the Most High against Israel, saying, Lord, thy, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what answer, what said the answer of the Most High unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Meaning what? They have become virgins. Even so, then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Who could it possibly be talking about? It's talking about the Israelites only. Nobody else is mentioned so far. And the seven and seven thousand means a complete number. Seven means completion, a complete number of men who have not bowed the knee to the image of, of Baal. Then he went on to T.D. Jakes, also wanted to say we are under grace. But the remnant according to the election of grace ain't dealing with the whole world. It's only dealing with the Israelites, as we're going to see. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. And we know who this letter was even addressed to. Not to Rome, Europeans, part of Rome, you damn liar. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. And then now, Vocab Malone will read this and say, See, Israel didn't get it, but the elect did. But well, who are the elect? Isaiah 45, verse 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name am the God of Israel for Jacob, my servant's sake in Israel, mine elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. The elect is Israel. Isaiah 65 and 9. And I will bring forth a seed. Out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect from Jacob and Judah shall inherit it, and my servant shall dwell there. TDJ, you're getting destroyed over here. Now let's read on, so we know this is talking about Israel only. Romans 11 and 8. According as it is written, the Most High have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear until this day. Right. Because what? The wicked Israelites was going off, so the Most High said, you know what? I don't want all Israel. I'm going to deal with the elect only, right? This is the main people that the Most High is looking for. And the elect are where? Scattered among all nations. 
And David said, Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. You know? Now, he picked up. What did, did TJ's pick up at? He came in around about, I think he said 17 is where he came in at. So we're going to read 17 and then we're going to go into this olive tree because he don't understand it. Modern Christianity don't understand it and they can't break it down right because again, this whole book was written to who? It was written to Israelites in Rome among the Romans, just like the whole Old Testament. I mean, the whole New Testament, the Ephesians with, you know, Israelites dwelling in Ephesus, you know, and so on and so forth. Philippians, the Corinthians was all written to Israelites dwelling among those people. Just like now you have Americans, Israelites in America, the British, Israelites among the Britons and the British. The French, Israelites among the French. It's not to all America. It's not to all Britain. Not to all France. It's the Israelites in all of those lands scattered throughout the earth under the curse that the Most High put upon us because of our disobedience. Look it up. Now Romans 11 and 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree, Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Wait a minute. Can we find out what branches were broken off? Because when the Savior said, I am the vine, ye are the branches, who was he talking to? He was talking to the disciples. He wasn't talking to the whole world. Read, read it in context. And the context of this is Romans 1, the whole book. Romans 1 proved the whole book of Romans, the promises there were written to who? Who are Israelites, the the uh, saints, right? Which are among the Romans. That's who the book was written to. So let's go to Jeremiah eleven to get a little bit of background on these branches. Let's see what it says. Jeremiah chapter eleven, verse sixteen. The Lord hath called thy name, a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit, with the noise of a great tumult, hath he kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee have pronounced evil against thee for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, the northern kingdom first, then the southern kingdom, which have done against themselves, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense unto Baal. Wait a minute. The Most High said that the, the branches that were broken off came from this green olive tree and they were called Israel. Let's read it again. The Lord, have, the Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. Branches of what are broken? The green olive tree. Who are they? For the Lord of hosts that planted thee, the green olive tree, hath pronounced evil against thee, for the evil of the house of Israel, branches broken off, and of the house of Judah, branches broken off, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense unto Baal, or Baal. You see? So the branches are who? The Israelites. Let's read further. Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and, and to, proclaim, to proclaim liberty to the captives, Israelites, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. See, brother, it says all that mourn, really. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they. Who? Zion. Unto them that mourn in Zion. The same all that mourn in Zion. Because who did Isaiah the prophet go to? He was sent to the Israelites. Right? The service of the Most High. Is what? Being a prophet, being a, a teacher, a preacher of righteousness as Noah was, as Enoch was, as Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, the Lord himself, the 12 disciples. All went to who? Israelites, Job, all Israelites. You can't serve the Most High according to Romans 9 unless you are an Israelite. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called who the day zion that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified wait a minute didn't the lord say the lord that planted thee judah and israel and he in the same branches that got broken off sure he did you see 
So it's right there in the scriptures, and you don't really, really need, need to read nothing else. So the branches that were broken off are the Israelites, right? Thou will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Because what? When Israel went against the Most High and got cast into all nations of the earth, right? They became Gentiles. They lost their heritage, started living after the ways of the Gentiles. So when the Savior came and died on the scene, on the cross, excuse me, when he came on the scene and died on the cross, he died to bring his people back, to be adopted back. And it's going to tell you that in the scripture when we go on and read it further. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Did, it, did not Jeremiah 11 and 16 on down just say that? Because of unbelief, they were broken off? Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. I'm going to have to bring it back up so people don't. Why didn't you read that verse? The whole thing is bearing witness that T.D. Jakes is a false prophet and he don't know the Bible. In modern Christianity is a farce and it's a big failure. You see, Jeremiah 11 and 16, the Lord have Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit, with the noise of a great tumult he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. For the Lord of hosts that pronounced uh, that planted thee have pronounced evil against thee for the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger, offering and offering incense unto Baal. You see. And even up here, it started out talking about them. That, that, you know, that they was uh, going against the Most High. You know, that he was not going to be with them in the time of their, their trouble. You see, that's why it went, you know, he went into that. And that's why the branches got broken off. Going back to Romans 11. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For the Most High spared not the natural branches. Take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Let's keep reading. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of the Most High on them which fail severity, but toward thee, cast off among the nations, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for the Most High is able to graft them in again. See, he stopped at verse 22. He didn't read 23. What does again mean? And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for the Most High is able to graft them in again. Why do you need to be grafted in again if you was already part of it? Because you got cast off among the heathen. You see? And it's going to go on to tell you. This is why T.D. Jason read verses 23, 24, 25, because it's very revealing. That sleight of hand, that witchcraft, sucked you right in. And they also... If they abide not still in unbelief shall be grafted in for the most high is able to graft them in again. You can't go somewhere again for the first time. You can't be grafted in again if you was never there. That proves that it's talking about Israelites, but it's going to go on and give you more. For if, for if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to the nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? That's a cut. And it's going to go on to tell you. For I will not brethren, who are the brethren, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. My kinsmen, my brethren, according to the flesh. For I will not brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Right. The old Israelites that was a part of the Holy Land. They died off. That was living in the Holy Land. And the Israelites that were scattered unto all the nations. The Most High sent for the gospel of the kingdom. To bring them back to remembrance. Not all nations. The, those Gentiles. But the Israelites. And it's going to prove it. For I will not brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. It's a mystery. And only the elect can receive it. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so, as a result of what's written above, and so all Israel, both Israel from the homeland and Israel scattered abroad, calling themselves after the other names of the, uh, names of the other nations, Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, and so all Israel shall be saved. Why would he just come in, if he was talking about other nations, and just break in and say all Israel shall be saved? It's because... It's talking about the Israelites only. And so all Israel shall be saved. That is as it is written. There shall come out of Zion. The deliverer. Yahweh Shai. He. Right. 
the uh, he uh, how shall deliver he deliver and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob only for this is my covenant unto them what them Jacob the whole chapter is only talking about Jacob it ain't talking about nobody else T.D. Jakes is a false prophet there shall come out of Zion the deliverer let me read here and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant unto them who's the them Jacob the olive tree and the wild olive tree the branches that were broken off right going back into their own olive tree there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins Ooh, T.D. Jakes you're looking bad you're looking bad and that's who is getting grafted in. They don't never mention no other nations nowhere in there partaking of it. Now, he also said, we which were far off, right? Which he was talking about. Uh, we're going to show you, read more in context. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Who was he talking about? Anybody in the whole world? Just pick up my letter and read it. It was addressed to me specifically. And ye, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins wherein time passed ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh for fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others but the most high who was rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with the anointed, by grace are ye saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in the anointed, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through the Havashah Mashiach. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Most High. Let's jump down a little bit. Let's go to verse 11 wherefore remember that ye being in time past gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called a circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at that time you were without the anointed being aliens from the commonwealth of israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without the most high in the world why is it written that way because we were far off you know cast off among the heathen we didn't know about the covenants of promise we didn't know we were israelites let me see what david said here <clears throat> Let me show you what he said. So I can get it here. Bear with me. Yeah, Psalm 69, verse 8. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. You see that? Now. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, if you, to, to, in order for you to understand who it's written to, let's read a little more. That at that time you were without the anointed, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, because you were alienated and cast off. And strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without the most high in the world. But now in the anointed, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, ye, ye who sometimes were far off are now made nigh by the blood of the anointed. As concerning the flesh, Christ came. For he is our peace. Who have made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Who is this written to? Ephesians 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Shah, by the will of the Most High, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Yahweh Shah Mashiach. You see? That's who it's written to. Matter of fact, go. Let's read further. Grace be to you and peace from our the Most High our Father and from the Lord Yahweh Shah. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Yahweh Shah, whose name is Yahweh, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in the Anointed, according as He had chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shah to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. 
wait a minute you got to go to peter to find out further who that is who is it the predestined the elect and the foreknowledge first peter one and one peter an apostle of yahweh shout to the strangers scattered you ain't scattered if you're from those places if you were born in galatia and you're a galatian a person you know um let me not say born there but if you are a galatian right and you're of that nation which a lot of them galatians was was edomites if you were edomite born in galatia you ain't scattered there but if your your forefathers were scattered there then you were born there then you're of the scattered seed peter an apostle of yahweh shout to the strangers scattered throughout pontus galatia who the book of galatians was written to cappadocia asia and bithynia elect according to the foreknowledge of the most high the father through the sanctification of the spirit you see that now that's the, the foreknowledge but who is that elect let's read it again isaiah 45 and 4 for jacob my servant's sake and israel mine elect and i will bring forth a seed out of jacob and out of judah and inherit of my mountains and mine elect shall inherit it and my servant shall dwell there elect come from jacob and judah you see that so first peter the elect that's who the scattered elect are and we can prove that even further and in ephesians one according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the earth of the world the foreknowledge that we sh that we should be holy and without blame now when you read in deuteronomy who is the holy nation seven and six and fourteen and one thou shalt be holy unto me israel above all nations that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children romans 9 you can't be you can't even be a part of the adoption or the covenants if you ain't an israelite by your house shout to himself according to the good pleasure of his will so the middle wall of partition was broken down for who the israelites because there was a there was a, a wall up because what the jews in the holy in the holy land you know they were uh jealous they didn't like the fact that Paul then was teaching the Israelites that was that was cast off among the nation that came back. We're going to prove that also in Acts. Because what? They had shaved heads. It was eating pork. is wearing togas and not the, the, the garb, you know, or not the uh, ancient, going by the ancient customs of the, of the Israelites in the Holy Land. But when the Savior died, he was bringing back all those that was cast off into one body. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. For the making himself of twain one new man so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto the most high and one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby you see same people even the whole new testament is written to one people this is james one and one james a servant of the most high and of the lord yahweh hamashiach to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greeting and then he starts out my brethren see that it's plain man td jakes is a false prophet he's going off let's finally read acts 2 let's just start at 5 just to get a point and there were dwelling at jerusalem jews devout men out of every nation under heaven that's a see that sentence jews devout men out of every nation under heaven and you're gonna see some of the names that was in the scattering the first peter one and one right you're gonna see some of them same names Uh, let's just start at verse 6 and now when this was noise abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that they heard every man that they heard every man uh, because that every man heard them speak in his own language and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are not all these which speak Galileans and how hear we every man in our tongue wherein we were born see they was born in these other nations but they were scattered there because what their forefathers came to those lands scattered and then they grew up there keeping the, the ways of these other nations and they were being called what by the circumcision uncircumcision parthians and medes and elamites and dwellers in mesopotamia and in judea and in cappadocia in pontus and asia phrygia and pamphylia in egypt and in parts of libya about cyrene and strangers of rome jews and proselytes wait strangers of rome romans europeans Euro rome is part of europe no you idiot to the israelites that were dwelling among the romans that were saints israelites you see because right here 
that were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So here, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of the Most High. You see that? Because why? They were living among these all, all these other nations, but they came back to keep the, one of the three feasts every year or the three feasts every year because they knew that they were Israelites. They knew this was the land of their forefathers. You see that? I mean, it's, it's obvious and plain, man. And I mean, that's pretty much it. So I pray you were edified by the lesson and that you learned something. Hey, these so-called Christians, they don't have it. They're not the people of the Lord. These uh, And even though T.D. Jakes is an Israelite, he going off. The Most High is going to destroy that dude. And, but we are ready for you, T.D. Jakes. You know? And we ready for any of you so-called Christian pastors, 501c3, mega church people. Hey, step on up and get cut up through the spirit of the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Enough respect to the brothers teaching the truth all over the earth. The branches that were broken off that are grafted in are Israelites. And this truth is only for the house of Israel. Edomites can't be saved. So-called white man is Esau. And the Lord is going to judge them accordingly.